This is a tutorial video for the digital book chapter in Against the Clock. And in this video, I'm going to take you through stage one and stage two. I'm on my desktop and I got my WIP folder. I've placed the digital chapter files from Against the Clock in my WIP folder. Now I'm going to open up Dreamweaver and set up a site using my Manage Sites dialog box. I'm going to click on New Site and I'm going to call this ATC or I'm going to call it actually ATC New Site. Then I want to click on the Browse to my local root folder. I'm going to go to my WIP folder and then look for that digital chapter folder that I moved into my WIP folder from against the clock. I'm going to uh, select a specific folder for stage one, but for you it'll just be the digital chapter or chapter folder from against the clock. I'll select save, I'm going to go ahead and OK and click done, and then all my files that were in that folder should now appear in my um, root folder in Dreamweaver. So that should be identical to the folder that I have in WIP. So let's just take a look at that again. So I've selected a stage one. So all my files here that are in my WIP folder are identical in my files panel in Against the Clock. Now I can create a new HTML web page or I can open up an HTML page I can attach a CSS style sheet to a, a web page. Okay, I'm going to create a new HTML document. So I'm going to select HTML. And I'm going to go ahead and give a title to this document. And this is going to be the title that will show up in, on the tab in the browser. So I'm going to type in against the clock space and then find that pipe on my keyboard. It's above the backslash space, special characters, and typography. Then I'm going to uh, click Create. And now you can see in my code pane, so I'm in split view, in design view, in my code pane I can see in my head tags there's a title tag now with the text that I just typed in. So this is going to be the title or the text that's going to show up on the tab in my browser, not the actual web page. I'm now going to save this HTML document by going to File, Save As, and I'm going to title this Typography. I'm just going to go ahead and save, I'm going to save this as Typography 1 because I already have created a Typography HTML, but for you, um, you can just name it typography.html. So in your folder you probably just have your images folder, your styles CSS sheet, and this typography.txt. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And that completes stage one. And now I'm going to go on to stage two, working with semantic markup. So let's just look at the code again. Right now my body tags, they're I don't have anything within the body tags. Whatever you pl place in the body tags is what is actually going to show up on your web page. So now we want to place some content within our body tags. I want to open up the typo typography text file in my root folder. And this is just straight text that hasn't been formatted. So I want to copy and paste by doing a, an edit, select all, and then copy, then go back to my typography HTML page and paste that text in my document. Now in the code pane I can see that that text now lies within the body tags. I want to select all of the text, doing a select all again, and now you can see in the code view that all the text within those body tags are also selected. I want to 
for, uh, format this text, right now there's no paragraph returns, no spacing between the paragraphs. So I want to do a find change to fix every place that there is a, a line break. I want to replace that with a paragraph return. I'm going to go to the find, find and replace in files and select basic in current document. And so I'm, I want to find every instance where that BR break tag occurs and I'm going to replace it with the paragraph tags. So I want to start with the closing paragraph tag and then the opening paragraph tag and then replace all. So now you can see the spaces or paragraph returns added in the design view as well as in the code view. So the break tags are now replaced with the paragraph tags. If I go to um, below here, I can see that there is now a search panel that shows me wherever uh, that those tags have been replaced. And then I can also click on the refresh button if I need to refresh my view. I can also go to view and refresh design view. Now I want to go to my toolbar, which is on the left of my code view here. You can also go to Window, Toolbars, and select Common to bring up this toolbar pane. And then I want to look for my Format Code, uh, Format Source Code button. Select that and then Apply Source Formatting. And that just cleans up my code, uh, if there are any spacing, uh, spaces in between the tags and the codes, it just cleans that up. Now I want to apply some more text formatting by using my properties panel. And if you don't see the properties panel, you can go to window, properties to bring that up. So in the properties panel, I'm in HTML. And if you go under format, you can see there's the paragraph, there's also the heading one through heading six. So you want to always assign your heading to heading one, and that gives priority to your heading. So don't um, mistakenly think that you want to use heading two or heading three because you want a smaller type size for your heading, but you always want to use heading one for your main heading in your document and you can only assign one heading one in your document formatting. So I'm going to select my heading here, special characters and typography, and then select heading one using my properties panel. Um, then I'm going to go to the quotes and related characters subheading, and I'm going to apply the heading two tag. So you can see in the code pane now you've got the heading one tag, and you've got the heading to H2 tag. So I can go ahead and assign um, the next subheading within that to heading three where it says quotation marks and select heading three. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna assign uh, heading two to hyphens and dashes. Then I'm gonna assign heading three to hyphen and dash and m dash, so the different types of dashes and hyphens. Then for special characters, I'm going to assign heading 2, then the different kinds of special characters, I'm going to assign heading 3, and then for resources, I'm going to assign heading 2. If you notice, if there's the asterisk at the tab, on the, um, to the right of the tab, it means that you haven't saved your file and you've made changes since your last save. So if you go ahead and save now, then the asterisk will disappear. I'm going to go back up to the paragraph and the quotation where it says David Ogilvy, and then Ogilvy on advertising. I'm going to select Ogilvy on advertising and do a control right click. And then you can see that there's a menu that pops up and select wrap tag. This allows you to type in shortcuts for code and Dreamweaver brings up some options once you bring up that wrap tag, uh, once you select wrap tag in that menu, 
And if you just type in CIT, then you'll see the site tag for citations. So go ahead and just hit return to select that tag. And now you can see that it's italicized and in your code pane that text has the site tag. So now we've applied the site tag to the text. Now you can select, go up the paragraph and select the text in the quotes, God is in the details. So we're going to include the period but not the actual quotation marks. Again, control right click with that text selected, select wrap tag, and then type in Q for the quote tag and hit return. So now you can see the quotation tag in the code view has been added. Now we're going to go from switch from design view to live view. And if you see in live view, live view is going to give you a more accurate representation of what your screen will look like in the browser. So in live view, we can see that there's a double set of quotation marks. And then in the code, you can see that there's also there's the quote tag. And then there's another quote tag. Some browsers will automatically place the quotation marks around a Q element. And so then you would not need to insert them in using the characters on the page. But different browsers may do different things. And so they may insert different types of quote marks as well as from um, like straight or the cur curly or smart quotes. But you need to always check in live view to see it more accurate preview. Just keep in mind that in design view, it may not appear as it will on your website when you view it in a browser, in various browsers. So we're going to go ahead and just delete one of those quote tags using the code pane. So that's where uh, using the code pane is going to be really helpful. So select the and quote tag, and we're just going to delete that. Now if you it disappears in design view, but if I go to live view, you can see a single set of quote marks. So you can switch back and forth from design to live view to kind of check to see how it would appear in the browser. Now we want to go to our Dreamweaver menu and select Preferences and look for Code Hints in under Category. Once you select Code Hints to the right, make sure that after typing the closing tag is selected. So this is when the Code Hints will appear is after typing in the, the uh, closing tag. Then click Apply and Close. I'm going to scroll down and look for my abbreviation in the special special characters after the copyright symbol. So you can see this ANSI -N abbreviation. We're going to look for that in the code pane. Since I've highlighted it here in design view, it will highlight it also in the code view. So then I'm going to put my cursor right before the abbreviation. And then I'm going to type in the code AB, or the opening tag. And then using the code hint, it shows me the ABBR tag. I'm going to hit return to select that. I'm going to type the space bar and then T. Select title, hit return. And then I'm going to type in the text within the quote marks. So I'm going to type in the full name, Americans National Standards Institute between the quotation marks. Then I want to put my closing tag to the right of the closing quotation mark. I'm going to put my cursor after the ANSI text and then type in the closing tag for the abbreviation tag. Then I'm going to select the code for the abbreviation tag. So we've got the opening and closing tags for the abbreviation. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to find the next instance where that abbreviation is used in the paragraph below it. 
and then just paste in that tag right before the text ANSI in the code view. So now if I switch to live view and I find the abbreviations, if I hover over the ANSI text, the full name will appear for that abbreviation. And I see down here in the second instance, I need to delete my extra ANSI text. So now in both instances, you can see the full name when I hover over the abbreviated text. So I'm gonna go back to the design view um, in my code here, I see that I placed the closing abbreviated tag before the ANSI abbreviation, so I'm just going to move that after the text. And then put my closing tag, my closing container tag here after the quotation mark in American National Standards Institute, then the ANSI text, then the closing tag for the abbreviation tag. So make sure that it looks identical to what I have here in the code view. Now we want to use our semantic markup to format with strong and emphasis elements rather than using bold or italics so that uh, for one advantage is when screen readers are reading it, they will read the text with uh, emphasis. Rather, than if they were just reading it bold or italic, they wouldn't be reading it with uh, emphasized tone. So we're going to use our dialog box again in, in preferences. And in the general category, in the editing options group, Make sure that use strong and M in place of the bold and italic is selected. Then you can go ahead and apply and close. Now we want to look for our dashes and hyphens. So I'm going to scroll up and look for the N dash. So the N dash is when you want to use a little bit longer dash than the regular hyphen. So especially when you're, uh, you want to show a passage of time like from December 15th through January 2nd or for an equation or a mathematical expression such as uh, using the minus sign. So in this n dash paragraph we're going to select the word not so we're going to click in the properties panel the bold button and once you do that you can see in the code view that we have now um, giving it the, the strong tag. So that will be helpful for screen readers. So since we selected that in preferences, then now it shows up and it replaces any instance of bold with the strong tag. Now we want to go to the M dash paragraph right after and select the text more authority. Now you want to use the italic button and you can see in the code view that the emphasis tags have been added. And we can always switch to live view to see how it appear would appear on our screen browsers. All right, and that it concludes stage two and we'll go on to stage, stages three and four. Make sure that you complete these tutorial assignments even though you're not turning these files in you need to complete these files in order to do your homework assignment. So you'll be using the same style sheet. So you'll need to uh, go through all these steps so that you can complete your homework assignment.